Hey guys, what is going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and today we are going to be taking a look at the Atomic Pi. Yeah, I'm going to say it, the Raspberry Pi killer. So let's get started. Alright, before you guys bash me in the comments about saying it's a Raspberry Pi killer, keep this in mind. This is a $35 board with x86 Intel CPU inside. So, yeah, it's that good. I've seen other people who say Raspberry Pi killers, and usually they're reviewing boards that are like two to three times what the Raspberry Pi is, like $80, $90 boards. Obviously, or it should be better than the Raspberry Pi, but this, like I said, I keep mentioning, it's a $35 board, and I don't know how they are making money from this. This has some weight to it with this huge heatsink and all these other components that you add onto it. Like the heatsink alone is like $2 or $3 maybe. Then you have all these other components. How, how are they making this $35? Now this is an Intel Atom X5Z3850, which is the same as this Latte Panda, the, the regular one, not the Alpha. And this guy costs $79 just to ship without anything. I mean, I, I don't know how they're doing it. I will have all the links in the description below. I will have a link to their main website where they're selling it and also their Amazon link to where they're selling it. And I think it's gonna refill, they're, they're constantly refilling stock. So just keep that in mind. Uh, they will have stock on the Amazon website. Now I'm gonna go through this board really quick because looking at their schematics, it didn't give me much insight to what everything does. So I'm just going off to what I know from their schematics. So I'm gonna start with the HDMI and then go around clockwise. So first, obviously we have the HDMI, which only supports up to 1080. I haven't tried 4K with it, but on their website it says 1080. Then you have the Bluetooth antenna, and then you have the volume headers. Um, I'm guessing if you install Android, you could control the volume up and down through this. And I did look at the schematic, it does do that. And then you have the UART, Wi-Fi antennas, and then this 20 pin jumper, I don't know what it does. I couldn't find anything on the schematics as to what that does. Two speakers, and it does have a built-in amp. And then you have channel 14 and channel 13, which I don't know what they do either. Ethernet ports, USB 3.0, and then this one that says webcam, but really it's actually a USB. So I looked up the headers on that. And then you have this, uh, I guess, JTAG header. And then you have these other ones that are not soldered in, which is the power and then the fan. Going up to this side, you have the SD card and then the reset switch. Now I did buy this with the jumper board where you have the power connector, the barrel power connector. And that was the only one available. I couldn't even buy the regular board that was 35. This was I think 40 plus $8 shipping or something like that. So it still came out really cheap with this. You don't need this jumper board to power the board. You just need to plug it into a jumpers, which is I think these two over here. And according to this jumper board that I got for the power, you have about 10, GPIO pins and you only could power this guy with 5 volts not 12 so don't don't stick in a 12 volt power connector in there or you're gonna blow out the board now let's talk about the CPU a little bit you got this massive heatsink onto this little tiny die it's a Intel Atom X5 Z8350 which is in a bad CPU I've seen a lot faster it's not the greatest but for $35 seriously it's 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 pretty impressive 2 gigs of RAM and a built-in 16 gigabyte eMMC all right so let's check out the default distro that it ships with now it does come preloaded with this uh, Lubuntu installation, 18.04.1. Uh, and I do have a little bit of an issue with it just right off the bat. Now, starting, I don't have audio. I couldn't get the audio to work. I don't know what it is yet. I, I didn't even update the software. I don't, maybe they have a newer image or something. I didn't really test it out yet to the extent. Trying their atomic samples, I was getting errors with the GPIO test as well. Same thing with their accelerometer. They actually have accelerometer, gyroscope, and all that stuff in here. And I was running into issues running that as well, getting error codes. I'm not sure what it is yet. Maybe I have to update my Python. I, this is my initial test. I only got this board yesterday and I'm just flying at the edge of my seat just trying to play around with it. So... Lubuntu is really a good option for this board because it's lightweight and it's able to not suck up all the resources. All said and done, booted up, it's only 386 megs with the desktop environment. Uh, Wi-Fi does work off the bat, so does Ethernet, so that's a good thing. I was able to play some YouTube videos, but again, audio is not working, so I wasn't able to hear any audio. As far as what the operating system offers, I'm not too keen on what it can and cannot do, but I do see when I type in Atom and I hit tab, it does offer like a bunch of stuff like here. Um, XMOS is the speakers. Uh, you could reset that or you got a base system. I don't know what that does. Hold mic, I have no idea what that does as well. I could type in version 
and you could see that I'm on version 1.0.0.143. So that's, that's as much as I know. Uh, as far as the read and write speed on the EMMC, it is a decent pace. Running this command right now, I was able to get about 191 megabytes of read speed and write speed. Um, there's no space left because a small temp drive was only 256 and I was trying to do it one gig. But still, ultimately, it's not a slow EMMC, so it's not too bad on that. Now, I do want to wipe this out right now and install Pop! OS. Um, Pop! OS is a very cool operating system. Um, it's another variant of Ubuntu, and I will be doing a review on that operating system because it surprised me as well. But I am going to load Pop! OS on here right now. It's more modern, more up-to-date, and try to see if I can get some games working and see how it looks. All right, so we are in our freshly booted Pop! OS, and let's check it out a little bit now. This is a really clean operating system. And like I said, I will do a full review on this guy. Now I'm gonna head over to system and let's go take a look at system monitor. It works pretty well. It does take a little bit more memory, like double at least on what it is boot up. So we were like at 400 using Ubuntu. This is about 1.1 gig, about one gig to 1.1. So let's see. Now I know that uh, Bluetooth works right away. Um, I didn't test anything to connect, but if this works, I know it is working. My audio seems to be working, so let's test that out real quick with like a YouTube video or something. So head over to Firefox, and it's a such a pretty system. Let's over to YouTube, and we'll play something really quick at full screen and see how well it does because I know it does have graphic acceleration. So. Um, I don't know what to play. Let's swap over to my channel. And let's just play the latest video. It loads pretty well. I mean, there's a little bit of a latency and lag. Hey guys, what is going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and today I got a build video for you guys, which is the Raspberry Pi NAS equipped with the e-paper display so from Pi Supply. Awesome. Okay, everything's working pretty good. Let's close that out. And what I really wanted to test was the Pop Shop because Pop OS allows you to game very easily, you could say. So it has, it, it's, it's really well. I'm gonna go into details with that a little bit later, but let's uh, install um, Steam. And here we have the Steam. Let's install that. All right, so I fast forward in time a little bit um, just so I could get some stuff installed and looked at. So I got my Steam working and I did install the wrong game. Chronium is not what I wanted. I wanted this game called Astro Menace, which is an amazing game. And it seems to be working really well. Look at that. Loading isn't too bad. And I also installed a game in Steam, so I'm gonna test that out as well. So let's start off with this one. This is just a space shooter. I, I really like playing this game and it's a good game to test it with. Uh, let's start off with the profile, so. Okay, difficulty is 50, I guess so. Let me um, double click on that first mission. You could upgrade your ships and stuff like that, etc. etc. Since it's the first mission, I'm not going to do anything, so let's just start. Okay, I can increase ooh, F2 to show and hide FPS counter. That's very important. Let's try that out. Okay, I'm getting about 66 frames per second. I've got these two little ships to help me out. Whoa. I don't know if audio is working because I don't hear anything, but I do have the volume down pretty low. So if you guys hear something, probably it is working, but 60 something frames a second on a kind of little 3D game like this, which is pretty impressive. I, I'm, I'm enjoying it. You use your mouse to kind of like move around and I think right click is to fire my missiles. So I'm a little slow with this one. Let me just do this. Shoot down these couple of guys. And yeah, right click is for missiles. So I just gotta be careful of these. Nah, it's good enough for now. I'm done testing this game. Let's try some um, Steam games. So go back to main menu. I'll upgrade my ship next time. Let me touch. Nope, not hot at all. This big heat sink doesn't make cause it to have any heat at all. Like, I know this gets hot, but no, you could still touch the aluminum heat sink without having a problem. Now, Space Run is the probably one of the smallest games I can install because I don't have much. I'm limited by hard drive speed, so 
can't install a crazy big game. I could use an SD card and use it for storage, but SD card read speeds are so slow that it might not even be worth it to do that. So eventually I do get a need to get a USB 3 hub if I want high speed, you know, hard drive transfer. Now this game does take a little bit to load, I believe. And I forgot to enable the FPS counter on this. Okay. That's looking pretty good. I'm gonna hit play. Uh, what this is, is basically you build out your ship to defend against the cargo that you're holding. So you have these blocks and then you got these special weapons and you get to upgrade the weapons and the armor and shielding if you if you got shielding upgrade engines stuff like that so as you're flying along you'll make money and you know attach weapons to your ship as you go so here we go uh it seems like there is a little bit lag on the frame rates but then again you are emulating like wine and directx and all that stuff so Overall, it seems to be pretty good and it is running a little bit more graphics. I wish I put the FPS counter, but I'm, I'm thinking this is more like a 20 FPS, maybe 30. All right, let me escape this because I don't want to read that. Skip introduction. Okay, I don't want to read this. Let's go play our first mission. Okay, so I need to load the cargo and the cargo's details is here. Company is construction. Uh, this I need to load. Here, I get one engine, two pieces of cargo. Start. Let's get out of here. Oh, it's pretty fluid. Uh, and like I said, it seems a little slow, like maybe 20 FPS. So you could click on these and if you need to like add a weapon, I need 50 credits. And if I needed to add an engine, it's 100 credits. Right now I only have 50 credits. So I need to add... a gun right here. It's building. I know an asteroid's coming here in 16 seconds. And then you can always still like rotate it. You can rotate the stuff and do whatever you need to do with it. I think it's, is it right click? No. Recycle, repair. Okay, I don't need to know that. And then you collect the money. Now I have one coming up from there, so I'll just build another gun. I have more here, more here, and that's how you pass the mission basically. You just gotta shoot down these things before it comes to you. And then it gets a, a pretty interesting and hard, but it's a pretty fun game. I mean, I enjoy it on like something, it's not very heavy weight and you could play it on smaller laptops and stuff like that. Stuff that doesn't require that much CPU power. Grab that money. These guys are hurting me. Wow, I got a bunch of stuff coming this way. How come I can't rotate it anymore? I remember I used to be able to rotate it. Anyway, I'm just going to quit this game. I'm... Pretty satisfied on how it's working, especially just playing some type of emulation like that. Overall, it is a pretty good desktop using um, Pop! OS. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button. I, like I said, I just got this yesterday, so this is an initial review. And I'm having fun playing around with it, installing different distros and trying to see what it can take and what it can take and where the limits is on this guy. Um, if you guys got any questions or you want to see me test anything on this, let me know in the comments below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.